Hey friend and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and as always I am so glad that you are here today. Today I want to show you something in scripture. It's going to be a pretty short video, but it's something that I feel like we need to see. Something that I believe that God showed me a few months ago. I've had it in my notes to share with you for a long time now, and today is the day. So if you have your Bibles, I would love for you to turn it with me to John chapter 18, and we are going to get right in. Okay, so we are going to be in the book of John, and we are going to be in chapter 18, and I want to kind of set up what is going on. So this is right after Jesus has been arrested. Now we see this, we can read about this in the early parts of John 18, but for today's purposes, I am going to be in past verse 25. I'll tell you in a minute where I'm going to land specifically. We find here that Jesus is going in front of the high priest, and it says this in verse Verse 22, then one of the temple guards standing nearby slapped Jesus across the face. Is this the way for you to answer the high priest, he demanded. Now, this was in response to Jesus talking about how everyone knows why he teaches. He says, I have preached regularly in the synagogues. I've never done anything wrong. I don't know what you are accusing me of. And of course, we know that this highly frustrated the temple guard. And then Jesus was bound and sent to Caiaphas, the high priest. And then it says this in verse 28. This is Jesus's trial before Pilate. It says that Jesus's trial had ended with Caiaphas and it ended in the early morning hours. Then he was taken to the headquarters of the Roman governor. His accusers didn't go inside, it says, because it would defile them and they wouldn't be allowed to celebrate the Passover. So Pilate, the governor, went before them and he asked for what charge do you have against this man? Why are you bringing this man to me? What charges do you have against him? In verse 30 of John 18, it says this, We wouldn't have handed him over to you if he weren't a criminal. Then he says, Then take him away and judge him by your own law, is what Pilate said. Only the Romans are permitted to execute someone, the Jewish leaders replied. This fulfilled Jesus' prediction about the way that he would die. Then in verse 33, it says this, Then Pilate went back into his headquarters and called for Jesus to be brought into him. So you can see he was not even interested in being the one that was going to pass down judgment on this individual of Jesus. But he says, Are you the king of the Jews? So he asks Jesus this, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, and I love this, in verse 34, Jesus replied, is this your own question or did others tell you about me? So in other words, is this your own experience of me? Like, do you think that I am the king of the Jews or are you just going off of what other people said that they believe that I am? Is this your own question or are you going off of what other people say? And then in verse 35, he says, am I a Jew? Pilate retorted, your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? So it's this direct question that Pilate asks, what have you done? And I want you to think about that. The question was, what have you done? Jesus answers in true Jesus form. In the red letter, it says this in verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. I love this so much. It reminds me of this attitude that we are to have of maintaining a, a kingdom perspective in the earthly realm, right? Of keeping this kingdom mentality in the earth. And it is exactly what Jesus did. Now, if there has ever been one of those scriptures, and there's many, but if there has ever been one of those scriptures where we need to look at how Jesus behaved in this moment and then adopt that same behavior for ourselves, it's this one in verse 36. Because Jesus doesn't directly answer the question. When asked, what have you done? What have you done? 
Pilate was looking for Jesus to say, well, I've performed miracles. Well, I healed the blind. I cast out demons. I was um, the leader of these students that were my disciples all this time. I've done all of these great and powerful things through the mighty name of God as I've been in the earth. And he doesn't say that. Jesus says simply, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. What is he doing in this moment? He is reminding him, I don't belong to the earth. Listen, I may be here in, 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 in physical form. I may be here in fleshly form, in a fleshly man body, but I am the son of God. And my jurisdiction, the, the leader of what I do, the, the kingdom that I belong to is God's. The kingdom that I belong to isn't of this earth. Because if it was, if it was, my followers, if, 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 if I was led by the world, if I was, if this place was my home, in other words, if this earl, earthly space this, this world that I'm sitting in right now, that you and I share right now, if this earth was my kingdom, then what would happen? My followers would fight to keep me here. They would fight to keep me here and from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. They would do everything they could, but I told them while I was with them that this was going to happen and that I was going to suffer, that I was going to die, that I was going to resurrect, that I was going to go back to be with the Father and that I was going to send an advocate in my place and that they were going to proclaim the gospel message with their lives for the rest of theirs. And that is not what Pilate thought that Jesus was going to say. Pilate wanted Jesus to give him a reason to put him in chains. He wanted to give him a reason to shame him and to convict him. But instead, Jesus is saying, listen, I don't care what you do here because what happens here in the earth, it's none of my business. What happens here, this side of, this side of eternity, this side of this, this earth, this side of heaven, it, it's not my home. It's not where I belong. I'm, I know where I'm going. I'm going to the Father and I am run by a different kingdom. I am a follower of a different world. And what did you do? Pilate asked. Jesus simply begins to talk about his kingdom. Christ gave an account of the nature of his kingdom. And I asked the same question for you and I, can we do the same? You know, I had a friend recently ask me a, a serious question about some of the major events that are going on in our world today. And I was quite honest with her when I said, I will give you an answer, but you need to know that the answer that I'm giving is filtered through the Word of God because I live with a biblical worldview. And this place is not my home. And so I am constantly looking at heaven as my home and as kingdom, the kingdom of God as the reality of my forever home. And so I see things differently than ordinary people do. I do not see things from an earthly perspective. Can we do that? When asked by people, why is it that you do what you do? Can we reflect the nature of the kingdom of heaven? Can we just say, we're not living for this side of eternity. We aren't living for this earthly kingdom. We are headed to a better kingdom, a kingdom that is governed by God, a king that is run by King Jesus, a king that a kingdom that is awaiting us because we are followers of Jesus. And we aren't looking to human authority. We aren't looking to human government. We aren't looking to all of the things that are happening in this earthly realm. We are looking to Jesus. And we are run and directed and guided and instructed by that world. So can you and I, with our very life, begin to exhibit the nature of the kingdom of God. That is what Jesus did. And I believe that that is what his disciples, you and I, if you were a follower of Christ, what we are summoned to do, it's the assignment that God has given us to do. Listen, friend, I hope that you dig into this for yourself. It is so rich, so good. And I pray that as you begin to study, that you would ask God, show me what I need to see. 
Show me the truths in your scripture. Make it come alive to me. Because listen, friends, the word is powerful. It is alive and it is working and active in our life if we allow it to be. Friend, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a huge thumbs up. Like this video, share it with somebody that you know and love. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified for every time that I upload content just like this one. And if you haven't done so already, would you subscribe to this channel? Become a part of this family. I love love you. I, I so look forward to these videos. I look forward to sharing with you what the Lord has laid on my heart. It is the joy of my days. Thank you again for being here, and I look forward to my next video. In the meantime, have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye, friend.